I'm going to call the Honourable Member for Brisbane. Thank you very much, um, Deputy Speaker. Look, I'm very pleased to be speaking on the Australian Citizenship Amendment into um, Adoption Bill 2014. Look, the purpose of this bill is to facilitate the grant of Australian citizenship to children who have been adopted by Australian citizens under the bilateral adoption arrangements between Australia and countries that are not party to the Hague Convention on Intercountry Adoption. And as the Prime Minister said in the House on the 29th of May this year, policy reform and progress on intercountry adopting has been in the too hard basket for far too long and simply because of red tape, Mr Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, this bill has at its very heart a humanitarian focus, a focus that looks to remove unnecessary red tape that gets in the way of children from around the world who have no parents or no effective parents being able to have a much better life in Australia. And Deputy Speaker, when you look at the state of the world at the moment and the rise of mindless terror and vicious international criminal conduct, it is absolutely imperative on all of us to do all that we can to remove the barriers for entry for these children, and that is absolutely clear. And to this end, I find it more gratifying that the policy focus of the bill in removing red tape to these children from having a safe and loving home in this country is not just a symbolic gesture, but it's very, very real. And it will produce outcomes that will make very positive and very tangible um, difference to the lives of so many children around the world. Previous to you sitting in the chair, um, Madam Speaker was in the chair, and I just want to pay tribute to her and the work that she and her committee um, did many, several year, many years ago, particularly in this area. And too often, um, when we look at the past seven years, the people of Australia have had their expectations falsely built up by symbolic actions and no substance behind them. But this bill is different because this government is different. Indeed, this was a promise from the Prime Minister and it was made in December last year when he committed to reforming overseas adoptions by the end of 2014. And to this end, on the 19th of December last year, Prime Minister Abbott announced that he would establish an interdepartmental committee on intercountry adoption to consider options for reform and to improve intercountry adoption processes. There was a total of 108 submissions. Um, 26 were from organisations, with the remainder coming from individuals representing adult adoptees, adoptive and prospective parents, academics and individuals with a professional interest in intercountry adoption, and parents and children who are now adults deeply affected by past practices of forced adoptions. In addition, the Prime Minister also received 60 items of correspondence on intercountry adoption reform and submissions made to the Interdepartmental Committee expressed a significant level of frustration with Australia's current approach to intercountry adoption. Particular issues raised, Deputy Speaker, were the Commonwealth's approach to selecting intercountry adoption partner countries, the quality of the states and territories administration level of support provided to prospective adoptive parents, the cost, the waiting times, the uncertainty of outcomes, not only overseas, um, but also within Australia and the standard of post-adoption support services. Deputy Speaker, there are other criticisms. They are related to the current Commonwealth state model of regulating intercountry adoption, the lack of nationally consistent laws and policies and procedures. And it made it really difficult for families who moved into state uh, and across territories to receive consistent and, predict and predictable levels of support. It also made it very, very difficult to provide consistent outcomes across Australia. Deputy Speaker, taken as a whole, these frustrations could represent significant impediments to Australians considering intercountry adoption. And given the frustrating history, the Interdepartmental Committee itself stressed that there is an imperative to be clear about the impact that any reforms are likely to have on these impediments to ensure expectations of families are realistic with regard to the future of intercountry adoption in Australia, and to make clear that in many cases they will go towards improving the experience of people participating in intercountry adoption rather than making a dramatic change in the rate of adoptions. It should also be noted that 24 of the submissions made to the, the committee did not support intercountry adoption, highlighting concerns with the safeguards in place to protect parents and children from unlawful practices and the effects of children growing up outside their culture. 
Deputy Speaker, such concerns were acknowledged up front by the Prime Minister in a second reading speech when he said, we do not want to repeat the mistakes of the past, but we do want to remove the red tape and reduce the delays that don't benefit anyone. To the end, the Interdepartmental Committee noted that Australia is committed to ensuring that all parties to intercountry adoption arrangements are protected from exploitation and abuses. These vulnerable parties clearly include children and birth families where a child has been relinquished and the prospective adoptive parents. Deputy Speaker, it, would not be, it should not be automatically assumed that the interests of these parties are necessarily in conflict. The Interdepartmental Committee addressed these concerns quite directly itself on page 8 of its report when it states that greater efficiency in the process so long as it does not come at the expense of thoroughness, may remove some of the frustrations experienced by prospective adoptive parents, while also reducing the amount of time spent by children in institutions. Australia's approach to adoption recognises that children who cannot be brought up with their family are entitled to grow up in a permanent, secure and loving family environment, and a more efficient inter-country adoption system would be better able to provide children with this environment in a timely fashion. Deputy Speaker, Australia's current regulatory approach observes the international principles guiding inter-country adoption, which is set out in the 1993 Hague Convention on the Protection of Children and Cooperation in Respect of Inter-Country Adoption. And there are some very fundamental um, principles in this convention. The best interest principle, the best interest of the child are paramount consideration in all convention inter-country adoptions. The subsidiarity principle. Adoption is subsidiary to care by family and inter-country adoption is subsidiary to domestic adoption. The safeguards principle. Safeguards must be developed to prevent the abduction, sale of and traffic in children. And the cooperation principle, where authorities must establish and maintain effective cooperation to ensure that these safeguards are effectively maintained. And the competent authorities principle, where only competent authorities appointed in each country should be permitted to authorise inter-country adoptions. For the purpose of the Hague Convention, the Commonwealth Attorney General's Department is the Australian central authority for inter-country adoption, and the states and territories are also central authorities under the Hague Convention. However, Deputy Speaker, despite many attempts owing to the lack of political impetus from both the Commonwealth state and territories and the complexity of amending state and territory legislation that relates to both inter-country and domestic adoption, this work um, has not been progressed. And this is not an acceptable solution. As the Prime Minister said on 5 May this year, for far too long, children who legitimately need a safe and loving home and Australians who dream of providing this home have been hindered by red tape and confusion. The government is pleased to be able to undertake real action to bring families together. Consistent with these goals, the government has been moving ahead in progressing the issues. And apart from the Prime Minister's commissioning of an interdepartmental committee on inter-country adoptions report, the government has also put in place amendments to the family law regulations that will make it easier to recognise adoptions from Taiwan and South Korea. We've opened up a new overseas adoption program in South Africa, instructed officials to commence discussions with seven other countries about possible new overseas adoption programs, chaired a COAG meeting which agreed in principle to the Commonwealth providing a new national overseas adoptive service from 2015 and introduced amendments to the Australian Citizenship Act of 2007 to make it easier for children from Taiwan and South Korea to obtain Australian citizenship in their country of origin and asked the Minister for Immigration and Citizenship to develop options to reduce waiting times for visas for adopted children from overseas. Deputy Speaker, the government is now working through the detail of the new reforms with states so that the new approach to overseas adoption can commence as early as 2015. Deputy Speaker, the purpose of this bill is to facilitate the grant of Australian citizenship to children adopted by Australian citizens under the bilateral adoption arrangements between Australia and countries that are not party to the Hague Convention on Inter-Country Adoptions. Under such bilateral arrangements, 
Australian citizens have for several years been unable to adopt children from South Korea, Taiwan and Ethiopia. Although the inter-country adoption program with Ethiopia is now closed, there are a number of families who are awaiting the finalisation of their adoptions. At present, children adopted under bilateral arrangements require a passport from the home country and an Australian adoption visa to travel to Australia. This imposes incredible complexity and incredible cost on adopting families. And under the amendments to be made by this bill, children will be able to be granted citizenship as soon as the adoption is finalised. They will be able to travel to Australia on Australian passports and with their new family as Australian citizens. The bill will place children adopted by Australian citizens under bilateral arrangements in the same position as children adopted by Australian citizens under the Hague Convention arrangements. Deputy Speaker, the overarching requirement for Australia's perspective that a potential partner country is first willing to participate in inter-country adoption arrangements with Australia and second will meet the standards in safeguard equivalent to those required under the Hague Convention. And where a non-convention country meets these standards, there is no reason why adoptions shouldn't be recognised in the same way as, as adoptions in convention countries. Deputy Speaker, the government has recently given effect to the principles by amending the Family Law Bilateral Arrangement Inter-Country Adoption Regulation 1998 to provide for automatic recognition of adoptions in partner countries once the adoption is finalised and an adoption compliance certificate has been issued. And in this regard, Deputy Speaker, the bill um, enhances the well-being of adopted children by creating a more streamlined and cost-effective process which allows them to commence their life in Australia much more quickly. The bill will not change post-adoption support arrangements which are provided by state and territory governments in accordance with their respective laws. And while the laws and procedures may vary in some respects between states and territories, support services are provided to adopted children and their families on an identical basis whether the adoption took place under the Hague Convention or under bilateral arrangements. And children adopted from Hague Convention countries will issue adoption compliance certificates are already able to obtain Australian citizenship as soon as the adoption is finalised. This has been the case since the enactment of the Australian Citizenship Act of 2007 and the adoption compliance certificate provides assurance that the adoption has been carried out in accordance with the ethical and legal framework required by the Hague Convention. Has the process for children adoption under the bilateral arrangements include automatic recognition under Australian law is in the substance identical and there's no reason why those children should be treated differently in the Australian Citizenship Act. Key feature of the bill is an amendment to subsection AA of Division 2 of Part 2 of the Act and the amendment simply expands the scope of existing Hague Convention provisions so that they also cover adoptions in accordance with bilateral arrangements. There are many important safeguards that the government has built into this legislation. This would be relevant um, clearly um, when fraud and other irregularities come to light before citizenship was granted. Similarly, the minister must not approve a child becoming a citizen if the minister is not satisfied of the identity of the child. Deputy Speaker, the amendments made by the bill will apply for the benefit of all children adopted under bilateral arrangements, whether the adoption was finalised before or after the amendments came into force. Deputy Speaker, the government is realistic that this bill is not a magic bullet in solving all of the problems associated with inter-country adoption that have existed for decades, but it is an important and substantial step forward. And the bill gives hopes to families. It gives hope to children without parents where no hope previously existed. It is through the actions such as these that we show our humanity, where we can demonstrate that we are not prepared to accept the status quo that presently values bureaucracy and red tape over the value of children. And never can such a situation be acceptable. And as a parliament, we must reject it. As I said earlier, there's never been a more important time for legislation of this kind to be put before the House so we as a nation can demonstrate to those who inflict hatred and fear upon the world that Australia offers hope and love to those who deserve a better life. And there can be no more deserving um, than that of children with no parents. And I commend the bill to the House.